What is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Today I am exploring something I've wanted to do for a really long time. Um, probably the easiest way to fiberglass a rocket on the planet. I'm going to be fiberglassing this five and a half inch airframe and another piece of five and a half inch airframe with solar composites, nine and a half ounce glass sleeves. And then we're going to wrap it with mylar. The only issue we had with the little John was that seam. These don't have a seam. I think this could be the effective, fast way to perfectly fiberglass a rocket. And we're also not going to peel these tubes. We're going to do the uh, wet paper towel trick, which has worked great for me and worked fine on the little John. So we're just going to get these wetted out a little bit with a wet paper towel. That way we take all the glassine layer off. Um, this rocket, I'm not going to reveal what it is just yet. Uh, the main reason I don't want to peel it is that it's got all these nice markings for the fins and the rail buttons. Um, this rocket is 20 years old. I can't remember what the date on it. Um, so that gives you some insight, but that's all the information you get until the video where I actually build this rocket. But for now, we're going to set up the saw horses and get this ready to fiberglass. You can see I also have centering rings in here. We're going to use those to have the tube that we were, the ABS pipe that I run through there. Uh, that way we have a focal point for the uh, ABS, or for the sleeve to get zip tied to the ABS. When that dries up, you'll be able to see that it's not shiny anymore. I didn't really exemplify that well with the little John, but you just kind of have to take my word for it. I promise it works. All right, so here is the solar sleeves. We're doing a single layer because this is some pretty burly stuff. I think it's nine and a half ounce, which is the same stuff I have on my iris. Um, so it's not gonna be quite as robust as doing like two layers like we did on the, uh, the Little John. But while well, I wanna say this thing's not gonna be facing the same kind of stresses as the Little John, but it does have a 75 and plenty of room for a long case. So I can't say that. So we want, you wanna pull that a little bit? I'm assuming probably that should do it. Like one body tube diameter worth or so. We should have got the scissors out. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to try to line both of the tubes up on this, but it's not quite long enough. So that is out. So now what we're gonna do Oh, that's more than enough to do that other two. I can't remember how much I ordered, but it was like obviously way too much. Just to be safe. So we're gonna take this tube back off. Whoa. We're gonna sleeve it up. All right. Oh, mm, we didn't cut this long enough. That might have worked out all right. Uh, stretch it out before you measure it. <clears throat> Don't rely on dumb luck like me for ordering way too much and then still having enough, hopefully. The next step is to go to the store and buy zip ties that you thought you had. So we're gonna do that. Should I be one of those non-zip tie trimming heathens? No. The trick here is to put one zip tie on around your mandrel tube like you can see me doing here and pull it tight over the tube and put one on the other end as well. Once you have both sides zip tied, add another zip tie closer to the tube ensuring that the cloth is pulled nice and tightly around the entire airframe. The nice thing about doing it with the sleeve is even after there's epoxy on it, you can still pull out the ends to make sure it's tight and that your edges are sealed well. All right, there you go. Now it's on there nice and tight. So we're just gonna mix up some West systems and start wetting this out. Fine. I won't be the heathen. All 
All right, so we got it all wetted out. There's some spots where the epoxy is kind of pooling up. So I'm just gonna make sure it's all even. And then we're gonna do this cool trick that you can only do with a sleeve to make sure your ends are nice and sealed. Uh, we're basically just going to grab each end and pull it tight. But you can see, like I was talking about, I didn't want to peel the tube because these lines were here. And you can still see them very, very well through the glass cloth. So now I don't have to remark the uh, fin slots and I have a nice straight line for my rail buttons, which is something I never put on any rockets. So that's going to be a nice luxury. Fun fact about the old Rocket Vlogs fleet, every single one of those has an eyeballed uh, upper rail button. <laughs> Mine too. Next, we carefully wrap some Mylar around the tube. If you're curious about what Mylar I'm using, it's called Duralar. It's pretty much the only one available that's clear on Amazon Prime. I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to get some. Just make sure you wrap it nice and tight around the tube and you don't have a lot of wiggle room with this stuff. It won't slide around. So taking your time and making sure it's pressed firmly against the tube is important. Once that's done and is wrapped, I like to tape the edges sealed and then another very important step to get a smooth finish is to take a squeegee or similar tool and make sure the epoxy is distributed throughout the cloth very evenly underneath the mylar. Any parts that don't look smooth and glossy underneath the mylar are going to come out with the fiberglass cloth texture and you're going to have to sand it smooth afterwards. So taking your time and making sure everything is even is going to make your finish very very nice. Nice. The next day. Wow, all right. So the sleeves are definitely my new favorite way to fiberglass things. There's some spots. I don't know how well you guys will be able to see that because everything that's super reflective like this feels like you'd imagine. Like that it feels like a wet sanded and buffed paint job. Um, obviously I'm gonna sand it before anything gets bonded to it before we paint it. There are these spots where I believe the mylar just wasn't down all the way. So I'm gonna to try to be more adamant about that with the small tube, uh, cause these are gonna need filled, but it's really not that bad. I mean, overall, so, so good. So um, this stuff too, a lot of it, there's a big dry spot, like running looped around here. Not dry spot, it just didn't have good contact with the mylar. The cloth still wet it out. So it's probably gonna be really smooth once we sand it. But if there's anything left to hide, the good news is it runs right through the fin slot line. So the fillets are going to hide a lot of that. So yeah. Also, it's really, really light and super, super durable. This is, like I said, nine and a half ounce glass. I think this thing is beefy, which is great. Because like I was talking about last night, this fin can tube's easily long enough to at least fit a 6400 case in there. So... Who knows, maybe go buck wild, put an M3100 in there. But I think for the first flight, I just got an L1940 off a friend of mine. I think maybe we'll pop that in there and see how she does. But uh, yeah, so that guy's ready to go. Just needs some sanding and then we can start getting to work cutting these fin slots up. That's gonna be another video because you guys still don't know what this rocket is yet. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do the little tube and then I think that's pretty much it. But uh, I wanted to give a quick shout out to, I believe the channel is called Almost Space. I'll put the video link in the top right thing. Um, he did a video of showing how to use these sleeves and the zip ties and everything and made it very concise and easy for me to follow some steps. So go check out his channel. There's some cool rocket stuff over there. And if you aren't subscribed to this one, please make sure you hit the subscribe button because the goal is 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year, if we get to 50,000 subscribers, I'm giving away a seven and a half inch lock Patriot kit. I'm not gonna make you watch this all happen again. What I will tell you though is just be a little bit more patient than I was on the big tube. I'm gonna try to do that myself, take my own advice here. 
because I still had a, like way too much epoxy in there. Um, I just didn't give it time to properly wet out, so I'm just going to really take my time and try and get everything all smooth and nice. This is pulled nice and tight. I pre-cut the mylar this time. So yeah, hopefully we'll just have a nice, easy uh, application here. I'm gonna throw some gloves on, mix up some epoxy and go. All right, I started sanding this upper tube and these parts, even where there's these little white dots, these are very tiny little pinholes. It feels incredible. So I still have some learning to do with the Mylar technique. I'm pretty new to that. So uh, this tube's probably not gonna be great because I think I pushed too much resin out and then it fell off the saw horses. So I had to put new Mylar on the whole thing. So, but as far as fiberglassing goes, the sleeve is absolutely the play. But uh, yeah, solar composites, I'll put the link in the description. That's where you can buy the sleeves. Just make sure you order plenty of extra so you can properly cut the uh, ends to length. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Rocky Vlogs. Hope this was informative or at least entertaining to watch me try and figure out how to do this. It's still gonna require some filling and sanding, but what doesn't eh, these days, you know? I was just talking about this, like a 30 minute video of just silence and sanding if you guys really wanna see what's going on. Cause I have to sand this, sand this tube. I gotta sand the whole Honest John. That's a big rocket that's gonna take a long time. I gotta fill and sand the Saturn V fin can. I'm a little burnt on sanding after the Little John too, cause that took a lot more out of me than I thought I was going to, so. I, as much as I don't want to pause these cool projects, um, this I can keep building and wait till the very end to sand everything, but I don't know that I kind of want to just sand the tubes and get it over with. At least sanded, not filled quite yet, but uh, get that over with just so we can move on with it. But yeah, I'm a little burnt on the building rockets at the moment. I really want to fly some, but we can't really do that right now. We gotta build a pad. But uh, I wanna test my GPS system because I have a really cool project for balls coming this year. Um, I just ordered a tube for it, that's all. On Patreon, speaking of Patreon, thank you to my Patreon supporters. Names rolling across the screen right now. If you wanna join for as little as a dollar a month, um, you can check out the link in the description. It helps support the channel. All the money from Patreon goes back into this, yada yada, you guys know it. Channel memberships are a thing as well. If you wanna check that out, you should be able to click join at the little bottom. I think it's $1.99 or $2.99 a month. I can't remember, but there's also one-time contributions. This is all the, you guys know the things. It's all the things. Just getting a little tired to talk about it, I know. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Whether or not you're supporting me financially, I really appreciate you being here. It's been awesome. So. Uh, my name is Braden, you're watching Rocky Vlogs, and I will see you guys in the next video.